I'm going to go with the far left. Chris Staples, welcome to Real Talk with Star Scorpio. How you doing today? I'm good, man. How you doing? Good. I'm really good. And I'm glad to have you on the show. And um, one from one dunker to another, um, this is really an honor to have you on the show and for me to ask the questions I've been wanting to ask a uh, pro dunker like yourself. So first, Chris, where did you where did you grow up? Where were you born and raised? Uh, I'm born in Saginaw, Michigan, a small city right outside of Detroit. So same city Draymond Green is from. Okay. Um, so yeah, but I was born there, but I grew up in the Detroit area for most of my life before, before moving to California. All right. In the D and, um, when we talk about your family, you have siblings. Yeah. Okay. And when we talk about the height, where do you get your height from? Uh, mom, dad side. My mom's my mom's like five seven. And my dad's like six feet six one. Okay. So I'm six two six three. So all right. But I mean, like I'm honestly like one of the tallest in my family. Okay. So you know, me and me and my cousin are about the same height, and um, yeah. So. And one I was, thing I wanted to one thing I want to know, Chris. So some some of the people that I used to play ball with and dunk with back in high school days. Some people were late bloomers, man. So they just shot up from grade nine and then grade 10, 11, boom, boom, six, one, six, two. But then there was people that were always tall. Where did you fall in? I was the late bloomer. You, you said it late. Like right on point. In ninth grade, I was five, seven. And uh, yeah, five, seven. And then in 10th grade, I went from five, seven to five, 10 okay. in one year. Yeah, I went from 10th grade to 11th grade. I went from 5'10 to 6'1. Oh, and so in two years, I had grew six inches. Yeah, and then okay, so now do you remember when you first dunked? When I was uh, I was 17 years old when I made my first dunk. 17. Yep. 17. And uh, was it just a straight one hand or two hand dunk? It was a one hand dunk. I remember it like it it, it wasn't in any Facebook back then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was like the summertime. It was the summertime, and yeah, it was like the summertime. My uncle, who's five eight, okay, and at the time he's probably was like forty years old, but super athletic guy. Mm -hmm. um, he taught me how to dunk. So a guy five eight taught me how to dunk when I was six, maybe like six feet. Six feet. Okay. And so. so I, I got the fast break. Yeah. I'm, I'm going up for this. I dunked it. Yeah. yeah there you go, man. Um, and we had this conversation before I started, but letting the people know that I'm 5'7 and I used to be the dunker. So I remember my first dunk and it was a nine and a half foot rim. So I okay. could squeeze it in. Even now I can touch a 10 foot, but okay. I can't dunk anymore. I'm 48 years old, man. My knees are gone. Right. Yeah. But, um, that I like to hear people's first stories, but you don't have that on camera or nope. on video, nothing like that, right? Nope. Ah. I had to wait. I had to wait three, two, two and a half months to tell everybody, like, yo, bro, I was really dunking in the summer. And they're like, <laughs> I'm like, cause I I mean, yeah, I had a phone, but it wasn't like we were sending crazy text messages all out at the time. Yeah. Like 2004. So, okay. yeah. Okay. And now high school. Did you play high school ball? Yeah. Um, so you made you made the team easy. You know that story. Everyone knows that Jordan story where Jordan got cut from his high school team. Yeah, I can you made the team. To, no problem. I can relate to it. Um, oh, yeah. So I mean, um, I played freshman as a freshman, and then I transferred schools, transferred high school. So I played JV, and then I played varsity my eleventh grade year, and then twelfth grade year, I didn't. I didn't even make the team. Okay. <laughs> How'd that make I you feel? To try out. I didn't get a chance to try oh. out. It was a, it was a, it was a freshman that came to the school, this six, seven freshman. Yeah. Oh, wow. And coach, like I'm taking a chance on this kid. Um, I had missed the tryouts due to, um, going to like an ACT prep class. 
Okay. My mom was super strict with me at school. And so yeah, she, yeah. we're going here first, but forget the tryout. Yeah, yeah. You didn't have to try out at this point anyway. And I'm like, I'm not saying I'm better, but yeah, I got I gotta take this ACT. Yeah. And um I came back the next day and the coach was just like, We're gonna run with this this unit right here. And mm, six, seven. Wait, so did you go to college? Did you play college ball too? You were to college? I played football in college. Oh, you put whoa, whoa, whoa. So you senior, played, senior, I didn't play basketball. So you play football. Okay. Yeah. And then, so, yeah. No, I just want to know, like, because some of the people were asking me, why didn't you go professional? So I'm just trying to lead that question. Did you have a chance to go to the NBA uh, or play professional football now that I know about this? So, yeah, my story is kind of crazy. But, yeah, so I have a cousin Who's in? Who played in the NFL for ten years? He played with the Steelers and won okay. the Super Bowl. So yeah. like, football runs in my family. Like, and he played football, but I had other cousins who were playing major, you know, pl- playing in big time schools. Dad was the athlete. All my family members are athletes, so yeah, football was like the route to go. Um, so you know, I was pretty good in football in high school. Got offered Big Ten scholarships, all kind of D1 scholarships, and ended up going to Wayne State University, then transferring to Eastern Michigan, okay. which is a MAC-10 school. Okay. Um, but, yeah, so I played wide receiver and things like that. And so I I didn't love football. I just liked to play it. it yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so when I actually quit football, everyone was surprised. Like, what are you doing? You know, like, my cousin had – my sophomore year of college, my cousin went to the NFL. Or so they're like, "You're next." You yeah, know, yeah. You're next. And I, was just like, <laughs> I don't even like it like that. And so I ended up quitting and just becoming like a regular student. And it was oh. the first time in my life where I was actually like, I don't have to go to practice after class. Yeah, I don't, I don't have to go to study table. I can just be a kid, you know. Like, and you know, I've been playing sports since I was eight years old. Yeah. And so and- I, just thought, yeah. Yo, quick question that because I was I was the volleyball player. Like you talk about short set, you talk about spiking, you talk about anything. I could get up there and spike that down. Did you touch the volleyball um realm? I actually didn't, but my sister, mm-hmm. my sister, she's a one, she was one grade behind me in high school and she played volleyball. Yeah. So I used to watch her practice and she ended up she ended up getting a scholarship to uh, mm-hmm. Howard University. Um, oh, nice. play volleyball. So volleyball. So we it was times like in high school where I would make the paper and my sister be right there next to me in the paper oh. because she was really good at volleyball. Yeah, so crazy. yeah, it just really ran her family. Yeah. Yeah. Yo, one thing I want to know, since you played basketball and you still play basketball and you played football, did you have any injuries that set you back in anything? Oh yeah. In high school, I got injured all the time, man. It was crazy. Yeah. Um I uh obviously ankle injuries is part of the basketball. I think I dealt with that my junior year playing football. I broke a finger, uh, elbow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, broke my ankle. I had a, had a walking boot in high school at one point for yeah. like half the school year. I had a cast on my finger cuz I broke my finger in football and so I had to learn how to like I, I used to still go to gym class and play basketball with a cast like this on my hand. Oh god. It would just like still get up shots. <laughs> yeah. You know? And so uh yeah, I had a lot of injuries, but you know, but that I don't think that set me back. I mean, it was high school and it never became a it was never like a report in college about like being injury prone or things like that. Yeah. Uh, because I used I used to play every season at some point. So all right. And um did your finger finger heal well? Because I know some people who broke their finger or something, they can't bend it the same way, but everything's good. Yeah, like uh, the finger that I broke, it actually still feels like uh, the ligaments never like won't fully recover. And so it's yeah. like a little bit loose when it yeah. like that one finger just loose. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now with basketball too, I have a lot of questions about basketball, but um, it's because of my height though. I'm a two foot takeoff. Right. Um, and I seen a lot of your dunks. And you know what? I can't sit still when I'm watching the dunk offs, right? That when you dunk, I can't sit still. You know, black people, man. We I gotta get up. I leave the room half the time and I come back. <laughs> My wife, what, what you doing? I said I'm watching basketball. I'm watching the dunk league. I'm watching Chris Staples. <laughs> I'm like, 
appreciate it, man. But um, I love it. But are you two foot or one foot? Two foot. Yeah. yeah. And um the best. It's the best. Of course, of course. And you but you know who I was watching, right? So Guy Dupuy. Yeah. I see he's a like a one foot takeoff, even when he jumped over the wall. I'm like, how is he jumping with one foot, man? Like, These guys have for sure been like hurdlers. Yeah. Long jumpers. They were, you know, I mean, like Duncan is, is an amazing sport, but it would have been great to see people have the two sports and continue continue the you know doing both of them at the same time right right so good you answered that question man the two foot i'm a two foot one thing that i noticed is when there's a bigger crowd i seem to jump higher is that with you because you it is right it's not only me right it's it's all about it it's all about adrenaline you know yes yeah, true yeah that when that adrenaline takes over and learn how to control your adrenaline is, yeah that that's what led me to do, doing so much because I knew how to control it. Okay. Okay. So now when I heard the term pro dunker, I was trying to understand like, how do you, what's the criteria to, to become a pro dunker? I don't really know the criteria. It's so, it's so debatable and so many, or people have so many different takes on it. You know, mm -hmm. if I would say from my, from my, from my perspective, I would say, you know, a pro dunker will be like a guy, a person that can make consistent income off slam dunking. Right. You know, like if you go into a contest and you make a little bit of money here, that's nice, but that doesn't make you a professional. Right. We can have a professional pie. We can have a, a, a pie eating contest. Yeah. And you can win $500. Does that make you a professional pie eater? You're like, no, no I'm just, I just won, you know? <laughs> yeah. So professional is to be able to make it a business. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've, what I've, focused on for the last few years is making this a full-time job right Look up and be like, all right cool i don't have to go out there and and not have to depend on a contest because a contest is only a chance that you can win right that doesn't make you a professional mm -hmm. right? you can go out there and get lucky and win some contests but that's not consistent and that's not like when you go to work you're going to get a check on at the end of the week or at the end of the two right. weeks Right, because you worked. Mm -hmm. You can go. There are people that have been in many contests and haven't won anything. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't put you in a professional because you win contests. It's making that a business, a lifestyle. Yeah, I get it. I get it. And um, when you're talking about the contest, how do you apply for, you know, the dunk league or some of the other contests I see you in, or do they scout you out now and say we need Staples here, we need Kilgannon here, and things like that. Yeah. I get scouted out a lot now, yeah. Uh, but it's because of the resume that's been put out there. And so I use my social media platform as my resume. Mm -hmm. And so I, in my, for me, I post more than anybody. Yeah. More than anybody. And so, you know, when something's going on, it's, it will be shocking not to get a call because of how much content I put out there. I'm expecting of lots of people to see it at some point. Mm -hmm. If you haven't seen one thing, you have some points you have to see the, see this or see that. Right. Like, right. I, content that I put out there so um and just quality content so that's my biggest thing I use that as my resume and so that's when people hit me up and it, we go from there yeah yo I, I need to ask you about Harlem Globetrotters but before that yo Chris you're not only a dunker eh? you're you're a shooter too eh? <laughs> like I, I'm impressed with some of the, the clips that I see 360 between the legs Not done yet. In the three pointer. Oh yeah. Great That's it. The practice that it takes to be consistent is key to it too. But were you always a shooter too? I mean, before dunking, so like my ninth and tenth grade year, I mean I shot the ball really, really good. Yeah. And people, but once I started to like know, like I I was just like working out and practice and going up for layups and I was so close to like dunking on, on the layups and my coach used to be like, why don't you just dunk the ball? Yeah, and yeah. I, like, I can't dunk yet. You know, he's like, it don't look like, it look like you can dunk. You just don't have that mentality yet. Yeah. And so, you know, I I was just, a, I used to shoot 
you know, baseline three pointers. Well, that was my thing. Like the corner threes were like my spot. Mm -hmm. um, and so I focused a lot on that. But once I started to dunk, like when I made my first dunk, I was like, oh, I need to figure out some moves <laughs> in the game so I can dunk because this is a different feeling. Than yeah, three. yeah. I was like, oh, no, no. So I started to work on my game. Like, okay, how can I get to the basket now? Mm -hmm. I need to dunk in the game because it was just a different feeling. But, uh, but yeah, I worked on my three-point game. I mean, and not only my three-point, just my shooting all my life until dunking, you know, mm -hmm. happened. And then that took more of the attention. Yeah. You know what's crazy, Chris? I, I had no fear. Because I could jump so high, when there was someone in front of me, it didn't bother me. So were you, are you the same? Like, it don't matter who's in front of you. If you're driving oh, yes. to the basket, you're going to get dunked on, right? Yes. Same That's feeling, true. right? Yeah, I, I love it. Like, when, I, when I'm going out there and we're going against another team, and I'm like, who's the tallest guy on their team? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, that guy. He's getting it today. He's getting it today. Yeah. <laughs> mentality. Yo, there's so much I want to ask because, you know, I got to ask about Mamadou. You know, is it Mamadou? Mamadou? Yeah, Mamadou. Yeah, I got to ask about that. But um, one thing I want to get into first is um, Harlem Globetrotters, man. What was the tryout process for that? Uh, I actually, man, I sent them a, a video. They, uh, I reached out to them. They didn't know. Okay. They didn't for me. That was yeah. me reaching out to people at the time uh, just trying to get a job. And... I reached out to them. I sent them a clip. They liked it. They said, all right, we're going to bring you out to Houston for a tryout. Just do what you just showed us in those videos. Yeah, said, yeah. All right. And so I got to the tryouts. It was so many other guys there. I was nervous, man. I'm like, you know, like, because yeah, yeah. I was hearing so much talk. Let's the Globetrotters. This is a you know, world-renowned team. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just did what, what I showed them. You know, and they were, like, impressed because it, it wasn't taking, like, a bunch of attempts or whatever, I could just go up and do them. At, especially at that time, I was 25 years old. 25, um, okay. Yeah, I'm like, this is easy. <laughs> everything's fine right now. I don't even think about it. Like, I don't have to sweat with this. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so I did it, and they were just like, they were more impressed on the consistency. Okay. Back-to-back uh, -back dunks and things like that. Um, I remember the, the recruiter, after I'd done all my stuff during the tryouts, it actually got awkward during the trials because I was doing crazy dunks where people just started to watch. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is good. Like, the guy I'm supposed to be competing with to be on this team, he's like, yeah. you know, he's like, dang. And I went, and people were like, no, I don't want to go. go. Let him go again. You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got the job. So when the recruiter told me, he asked me, did I have a job at home? I said, yeah, I work at this rehab facility. Yeah. And he's like, you should call them and quit. And wow. that's all. That's dope. Look at that, man. Wait, how long did you play for the Globetrotters? How many from years? 2000, from 2013 to 2016. 2016. So, so do you remember when your, when your name started to get, you know, in people's mouths or people recognize you? Did you, did you remember when that first happened to you? You yep. do, right? Yeah. Um, so, like, my first year and a half with the Globetrotters, I wasn't officially on the team. I was, like, a taxi player which means I wasn't, I wasn't on the official roster, but I was playing in games and things like okay. that. Like they have like a magazine and have all the names and listed. I wasn't on that. Okay. Um, I was still trying to earn my spot. Yeah. So uh, one of the tours, um, I got sent home and they said, oh, bring me back when they're ready for me. You know, I'm like, okay, cool. I, I didn't make it throughout the whole tour. And so when I went home, I went to All-Star Weekend. Okay. And so I'm sure you've seen like the page Dunkademics. Yes. And so this is the first, it's All-Star Weekend, and I, it's actually my first year on the team, yeah. So it was All-Star Weekend, and I get there, and I see, um, I see Worm from N1. Okay. And I'm like, you know, I watched this guy on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, I can't believe he's right here right now. And I was like, really like, dang, this is crazy. Yeah. And so um, we started to, um, we went to a gym, and it was other guys, Porter Mayberry. He was also there, too. The five okay. five dunker. Five foot five. Porter Mayberry. Oh my god. Oh what? Yeah. Five five. And oh. Isaac White, all these other guys. So we're all there at this gym and we're about to have a dunk session. And I'm okay. like, 
I've never had a dunk session before. Yeah. I've never had, it's only just been me at the gym, you know? So I'm like, I'm excited. My, now the adrenaline's pumping. I'm yeah, like, yeah. Oh, about the dunk <laughs> guys. So we're going and I'm just doing everything I can think of. Even dunks I didn't even think I can do. I'm oh, doing yeah. everything. And yeah. so uh, Dunkademics posted on YouTube. No one knew it was who I am until that, to that day. Yeah. And it goes, you know, at the time it probably had like 50,000 views, but 50,000 views. I'm like, I don't, you know, for YouTube in 2013. Yeah. And everybody started to like, who's this guy? He's doing all this crazy stuff. 540, 360 from the legs, the arm and the rim, all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's when it, where it started to trickle. And um, I started to get a little more buzz. Nice, man. I like, I like the progression. I like the story. Yeah. Um. So I want to take it back to 88 for a minute. So of course you watched all the dunk offs, right? Right. So I got to ask you, Jordan versus Dominique. I get in arguments with people because I'm a Dominique guy because I'm about the power, the power dunk. Right. And I can't put anything past Jordan. Jordan's Jordan, right? Mm -hmm. But I really feel that Dominique should have took that uh, dunk off in 1988. But I want to take, I want to see your take on that. Now I'm a big Dominique fan. I have a I have a sh uh, a shirt that has uh, Dr. J, mm -hmm. Dominique Wilkins, Michael Jordan, Sean Kemp, Vince Carter, and then myself. And it's like the, it's like the evolution of Duncan, right? Yeah. And so, oh man, I would I would say Dominique too, but yeah. there is a difference, like. Jordan had the swag, and that's part of the showmanship. I get it. Out there, gold chain, dunking, yeah. walking off. All, you know, Dominique, he was he had the better dunks, mm -hmm. but Jordan had the the showmanship afterwards. Yeah, and that was the difference in the to me. That's me personally. I get it. Like, Finesse. That guy looked like that guy Jordan. That he looked like yo, I do this. Yeah, know, type of stuff. So that's where I would like lean on the Jordan side for that contest. Yeah. And not taking away from any of them, man. Then to to dunk, that's a skill and an art form that not many people can do. You know what I mean? Right. So respect to that. But now I got to fast forward, man. So 2020, I think I seen a video of you doing commentary. Derek Jones Jr. and Aaron Gordon. Aaron Gordon. There you go. Right. Yeah. When I seen that dunk up, you were doing commentary. Were you there doing yeah, the commentary? Mm -hmm. So they called you to do that then. So Dwight Howard, he's yeah. a, he signed to LA. This is his first time signed to LA. Yeah. And, and uh, or second time. He came back to LA mm -hmm. and he went to Venice Beach randomly. Mm -hmm. We're at the Venice Beach at the same time. VBL World Games champions. There's a trophy back there. Um, yeah, we won the championship today. But the crazy thing is Dwight Howard popped up at the beach today of all people. But I think he just signed with the Lakers or something. Or they're about to sign him. But I walked up on him and said, hey, let's dunk. And then we just had a dunk session. Like, it's crazy. I can't wait for the video to come out. Yeah. Like, what are the odds of that? So I'm like, <laughs> I see Dwight Howard up there. And he's just up there. He got a basketball in his hand. He's on a bike. And then he goes up to the hoop. And he's just, like, shooting around a little bit. And I was like, hey, you want to? You want to do some dunks? Yeah, yeah. I said it. I don't know why I said it. I just said it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he throws the ball off the glass and just, like, brings it way back, dunks yeah. it. And I'm like, oh, you just started something. Let's yeah. go. I put my shoes on right there. We just start dunking, having this whole dunk off on Venice Beach. We're just going back and forth, dunk for dunk. People are like, what's going on here? Yeah. Um, and then afterwards, Dwight Howard – he messaged me on Instagram and said, man, you make me want to get back in the dunk contest again. Yeah. I'm like, do it. You know, I'm like, I'm just supportive. Do it, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. He's like, yeah, but I want you to help me out. Okay. And that's, when, that's how the whole thing started. And so the first dunk Dwight Howard did in the dunk contest in 2020, he did yeah. the Christ there when he jumped up. The Christ there. Yeah. yeah. He did that. Yeah. And that was the dunk I worked with him on. Got low scores. I don't know what the people were thinking. But yeah. then afterwards, after like the contest, people looked at it in slow motion, like that's actually a really good dunk. Yeah. Yo, when when dunks get slowed down, 
like yeah. they do in Dunkley, it puts a different perspective on yeah. the creativity and the art form and the height and what it takes to actually get that ball in the hoop. So I get yeah. what you're saying, man. And so every it's still like people still play that dunk to this day. Like, look at this. He took it. He's smiling before he dunk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, just like this is <laughs> cool. Um. So yeah, I was at I was at All Star Weekend that I was working with him before the contest and everything like that. So I was actually in the building and just okay. commentating. The game. I mean, commentating from our, a different platform, the NBA Playmakers. Okay. Yeah. Of, yeah. And that's what and it was. So I, I yeah I seen it. So I seen your reaction. Honestly both dunkers were crazy i think they even went an extra round or two i can't remember yeah. but when aaron gordon dunked over taco i thought it was done yeah i thought it was done man get out of here bro if he if he if he jumps over no here he goes oh my god that's it that's it that's it that's it how do we do it wrap it up it was done <laughs> straight up man but i don't care what first off you're not gonna find anybody that height besides mama do yeah and the fact that he jumped over probably the tallest person in well, the tallest person in the nba after all that's been going on yeah he had to get it he should have got it but they're both both of them are my guys D, dj he's i'm cool with him too so i don't i, I don't like to debate all the time because of know, course <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's whatever at the end of the day it's like both these guys killed the contest man that's really what it's really about the show yeah that that was very exciting to watch man very excited man but um now the progression of dunks though so we had our typical one hand two hand reverse what we call the dominique bring it down 360 when did the dunk start getting crazy because i'm gonna mention a name to you man when vince carter came to the raptors I remember my brother said after one game, did you see that dunk that Vince Carter did from the baseline? I'm like, nah, he recorded it. And then again, I had to get up. Like when you see a good dunk, you, you can't sit down, right? <laughs> right, right. So when Vince Carter was in the dunk off, it was like epic because that's the first time I believe I saw the through the legs, elbow in the rim and things like that. Right. But when did you start doing this? When did dunking change? Do you remember? Well, for me, it was when I started to watch and one and I really started to watch air up there and I used to watch T dub and I, I, I used to work, I used to have a job and I would like on my lunch break, I would go, they, we had computers and I would just yeah. go on, on a computer and I would just look on YouTube all, while people are looking at other stuff. I'm up here on like YouTube just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> for, for 30, 40 minutes at lunch. Like, Oh, dang, I'm running late. I go back in next yeah. break, 15 minutes back on YouTube, watching these guys. So I used I fell in love watching that type of stuff. And then I would, you know, and I, and I, at this time, I'm probably like 24, 23. And so, and I knew I could do some cool dunks, but not to that level. But I started to like work on that stuff after work. After I got off my job, I would just go to a gym. We would hoop with a lot of guys. And then afterwards, I would just start working on my dunks and had like someone record it. Yeah. And, you know, and I, when I started to get like the 360 windmill down, and like my first actual between the legs was off one foot. Oh, it was. I did a high jump in high school, so I, I did off one foot. So did I, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and so, yeah. But then I started to find more control with the two feet, and it was a lot easier. Um, yeah. So, yeah, then that's when everything started to, like, change for me. And then, obviously, you had Eric there. He did the 720, and then you're like, all right, all right. That was the clip. Oh, my gosh. I remember seeing that when I first started watching YouTube. And I saw yeah. the 720. Did the 720. And then that, that I think that was the the days I like, Duncan and it has evolved. Yeah. Damn, man. So now I want to see if you could you you know me now from the interview, and I get crazy when I see a good dunk. What do you think my favorite dunk of yours is? I'm a power dunker. Power dunker. I'm gonna say the slingshot. Oh, <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you got it. I gotta be the slingshot. It is the slingshot. Okay. When you cock that back like that. Oh my gosh. Okay. I gotta put up a clip of you two, man, and people are gonna know the slingshot, man. Yeah, the slingshot. That yeah. That's when I'm mad. Yo. I, slingshot, I got an attitude. <laughs> it's like, all right, because because first off, I'm gonna hurt the rim, I'm gonna hurt yeah. my <laughs> own arm, and now I got an attitude. So it's like if I gotta go do this. Be ready for war. 
You know? Yeah, I love I love that one, and um, I do have to say the scorpion over over people. Yeah, I like that. I like the scorpion dunk yeah, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, just a few questions about Duncan now. Okay, what is your favorite dunk to do? Three sixty under both legs. Yeah, I've seen that a couple times from you. I like that dunk. I, like mm-hmm. I like it because it's like nobody can do it. Like, there's other guys that can do it, but we're not doing it in contest. And yeah. I like that fact. I'm, I can bring this dunk out anytime because I know nobody around here is going to do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I, when I know that, I'm like, that's, that's what I, I like that type. It's a tough dunk. If yeah. people do it, then they will be doing it. Mm-hmm. And so people, all, people know me for the 360 between the legs. And they say I always do it, but I'm like the fact that I can always do it. Yeah, speaks volumes. Right. You know, like if I could do it like it's easy, speaks volumes. So I should always get a good score because it's not an easy dunk, and I'm very consistent with it. But the 360 under both, that's just like next level stuff to me. Yeah, I seen that. I like that dunk a lot. But yo, tell me something. Have you tried? I think it's the Double East Bay. It's called Jonathan Clark. I seen a clip of him. Yeah. How do you put the ball twice between your leg and still dunk? Have you tried that one? Nah. Would you attempt to do it? No, I actually wouldn't. Yeah. It's just not my like that's definitely the next level. And I've seen Jay Clark do it. Yeah. Um, but it's just not my calling on doing it. You know, I was yeah. never the type of guy that was trying to that was one of my goals to do. You know, it just Whatever dunks I do, um, I want it to be like, oh, if you see him do that, you see him do that before, that means he can do that dunk. Okay, I get it. Like, it's not going to be like, I can do this in per. I want those, that was, that's just me. That's yeah. not knocking on anybody else because I think that's a groundbreaking dunk. <laughs> and I don't know who the next person going to ever do that. <laughs> but, you know, for me, it's like, whatever dunks I do, I can do it in person and I can do it in contest. If you see me out and when I'm out dunking, I probably can do the dunk that you saw on there and that. Yeah. You know, and some some things like, you know, some people they have their their dunks, but you won't be able to see that again. Mm-hmm. You know. So yeah. Whatever I do, I try to master it. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, now when we talk about jumping over cars, don't don't laugh, right? But I, I jumped over the hood of my Mazda 3, right? Um, you know how small a Mazda 3 is, I think, right? So I recorded that, but I see clip after clip of you jumping over cars. When did you first attempt to do that? And is that a scary thing? Because you have to make sure you get up there to cover the whole car, right? First time I tried it, it was in a contest. You remember we talked about adrenaline. I'm like, right. my adrenaline going. I'm going against Jordan Kill Gannon. Yeah. I know he's going to jump over this car too. I'm near the finals. I'm like... I guess I got to try it. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I had already jumped over a motorcycle that day. So I'm like, okay, that's not a car, though. But I'm like, I had some good distance. I was loose and, the, you know, my blood's pumping right now. So I'm like, all right, let's 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 go. First yeah. attempt, too. My first time doing it. I jumped over it. And, uh, yeah, that, that that's what it is. I, I mean, I don't practice it. You can't practice it because we're going to just bring a car and pull yeah, it of up. Course. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah, you got to yeah. be... You know, for a car, you got to be pumped up for that. Like, where can I just be and, and go get pumped up to jump over a car? Your car. <laughs> no. yeah. Only way I can do this is in a contest when people are screaming and shouting and you watching all these other dunkers, you know, get your head going. So, yeah. yeah. Cool, cool. So, Dunk League, um, you won Dunk League Volume 2. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. Uh, I'm not going to really get into it. It was a beautiful competition, and it ended up outside. The question I have for you is, do you prefer dunking on a gym floor or outside on a pavement? I'm like 50-50 with it. Oh, 50-50. Yeah, sometimes it just depends on the atmosphere. Like, so we, with Dunk League season two, we were inside and then we went outside. And yeah. I enjoyed I see. both. I enjoyed both. Yeah. Like, when we were outside, I was like, this hoop's good. The atmosphere is good. We're in this cage. Nice area. Um. I don't know if it was, it was yeah yeah it, it was just a it was a dope scenery so sometimes I'm like I'm good to be outside it's yeah it's like the park or the area or whatever 
of course, uh, of course. But yeah, I'm like 50-50. Yeah. Yeah, I prefer outside too, especially if it's not like a graveled up area because I've I've slipped before. You know what I mean? Oh, it yeah. has to be, you know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. it has to be a nice pavement there. Um, I want to ask about um meeting star uh, stars, meeting basketball players that you looked up to all this time. Um, and then you see them because I believe you met Kobe, right? Yep. Kobe Bryant. How was that experience? It was dope, man. It was <laughs> The funny thing, so I mean, if you watch some of my content, you know I work with, um, you know, Jenna Bandy. She does like trick shots and things like that. Yeah. And so um, she did. I guess she did a trick shot, and Kobe Bryant said he, he messaged her and said his daughters love like watching her. Wow. And so she's like starstruck, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna be coaching at the Mamba Academy," and she lives in the same city. He's like, "I'm be coaching up there, you know, like, um, come up there. You can come up there." And so it was like the morning, like seven o'clock in the morning, Jenna gives me a call. And I'm like, why is she calling me at seven in the morning? Yeah. And I the phone, I'm like, hello, like what? You know, so she's like, um, do you want to meet Kobe Bryant today? I'm like, yep. <laughs> yep let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> on. I'm ready to go. Let me know. Uh, what's the address? How do I get there? I'm already at the door. You know? Yeah. So she's like, yeah. So she's trying to explain, trying to explain to me her whole story. I don't want to know the story. I don't, <laughs> I don't care about what he said to you. I don't care. Because he had followed her. That's what happened. That's what it became. Big. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, we get to the Mamba Academy. He's there coaching. I'm like, this is really happening. We're really here. She called, you know, mm -hmm. uh, me and a couple of other friends. We were all up, we're up there. They didn't want to let us in. Not his people but the security people were like who are you people like he's running a camp for girls why are you grown people up here you know yeah yeah <laughs> come up here you know like we're here mm -hmm. and so he comes over he's talking to jenna first yeah you know because he's he doesn't know us he messages her and he has to explain the whole camp thing and and then afterwards he walks away because he gets back to coaching and so mm -hmm. i'm like I'm not about to meet Kobe. <laughs> I'm here like, I drove all this way. I'm looking at Jenna. You were talking too long. I'm mad at Jenna. I'm mad yeah, at yeah. Jenna. You were talking too long. You're supposed to introduce us. Yeah. I didn't know he was talking. And then something got distracted with practice. I'm like, I'm not leaving. I'm staying. And so they're like trying to like boot us out a little bit. And then Kobe comes over because mm -hmm. he noticed what's happening. And then he came and introduced himself to us. I think he just didn't mean to, but he was coaching so he was doing two things at once yeah Came over so my boy josh he go up to josh hey how you doing shake his hand this is uh my friend mia shake her hand comes up to me i'm like kobe what's up man how you doing <laughs> how you been <laughs> like we was best friends and he's just like what's up i'm like yeah I'm, yeah you know so that was my experience with kobe but he was he was super dope man super dope and uh <clears throat> and then on a sad note like do you remember how you heard about his passing? Yeah, literally. We were, uh, me and Jenna were actually together about to go to Venice Beach to uh, do some content. Yeah. Uh, like, I think we watched, it was some football game on or something like that. And then you just see across the screen or something, go, go across the screen. And um, Jenna's mom called her and said it at the, around the same time, like, did you hear what happened? And Jenna just like hung up the phone and she's like, and we're like kind of like, no, not really. That I remember it was a super foggy day, yeah. super foggy day. Mm -hmm. So it happened in Calabasas. Yeah, I, I live in Woodland Hills. Okay, that's two exits from where okay. I live at. So the hills are two exits from where I live at, mm -hmm. and so we're like, no, nah, that didn't really just happen. Like we're here and we're in the house, just kind of sitting there, just like stunned. And it really was a foggy day. I remember we were like, we're not going to Venice because it's too foggy out right, right now. And uh, yeah, it was just like crazy. I, and we, we ended up still going to Venice Beach because I'm like, I can't sit here in the house right now. Yeah. I can just sit here and just look at the news the whole time and just all the Instagram stuff. And I was like, we, I got to get out the house. So I had to turn my phone off. We went there and just did some content. Yeah. Because your phone was blown up too, right? Oh, yeah. Going crazy. Yeah. I, I turned it off. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Sad, sad. Um, and Vince Carter now. I seen you do an interview with Vince and you met Vince. How was that? Because you must have been that that fan, man. Like how I'm talking to you with you, yeah. Vince. How was that experience? 
I had lost words, man. Like I was sitting there interviewing him because I, I, so I, I saw Vincent, I was in Florida and he was at a, a junior NBA and he was doing like the announcing or something like that. Yeah. And I, uh, or analyzed and I was about to go over to him and ask him for a picture. I saw him stand up in between the game yeah. and I stopped and I, mm -hmm. I can't do it. I couldn't do it. Like I really went, I was like, I was like, like 10 feet from him and I was like, I can't do it. I'm too, you I'm too, I'm too nervous. <laughs> yeah. I didn't do it. And so oh. later on, my, the people I was there with, um, the NBA playmakers, they said, hey, we're going to do an interview. Mm -hmm. uh, you and Austin, we're going to get Vince in the interview. And I'm like, Vince Carter? <laughs> and like, I'm like, okay. So we get to the interview and I have a clip too. It's on my Instagram. Yeah. That before the interview started, you know, I'm sitting down, I'm mic getting mic'd up and he comes and he's about to get mic'd up. And I'm like, and I just couldn't say, I said, man, I can't believe I said, <laughs> and he's like, I said, man, you the reason I started dunking, bro. Like, and he was like, oh, that's dope, man. I appreciate that. I was like, dang. And I was yeah. sick the night before, like crazy sick. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, I, I sucked it up for this one. I was good. I was like, I'm, I, I started feeling better all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We have our interview, and uh, and Austin, my friend Austin, he uh, he gives me a compliment during the interview, like Chris. He's like Vince. I don't know if you know this, but Chris is a big time dunker. Mm -hmm. And Vince said, "I don't know if you know, but I know that already." Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, it was over. It was yeah. over. Like, let's go home. <laughs> like that part. Let's go home, ladies and gentlemen. It's over. I was like, I'm done. And I had like a list of questions I was supposed to ask them. Yeah. They're cut. Out the door. <laughs> I don't remember anything anymore. This interview can stop. And I'm yeah. like, I can cut the camera. We're good. Yeah. And that was dope, man. And that just showed, like, for me, it showed, like, you know, put your put the work in. People are going to see it. Right. You know, and don't worry about it. Just keep your head down. Keep focusing. Don't get, don't get complacent on, yeah, I made a cool dunk, a cool new dunk today. Mm-hmm. Hopefully it goes viral, but while while I'm posting that, I'm on to the next. Mm -hmm. so I'll let you guys enjoy that while I keep going and keep trying to keep pushing the envelope, keep, keep pushing the sport of slam dunking, and you know, and and, to, and sometimes you'll you'll reap you reap the benefits and see like oh yeah, and people like recognize it, and so yeah. even though I've never seen a comment or something from Vince Carter, he's like oh I I know who you are because people out there watching. It's not all about Instagram views and who you know and being ver um, verified none of that stuff matters because there's people out there that you don't know but they're watching they're watching yeah yeah thanks for saying that too man um one thing i got one more question for you but before i ask that question i do my podcast besides for the um donating to charities and causes i like to hear words of inspiration or motivation for people and there's a few people i ask this and let's see if you can give some kind of inspiration for someone or motivation for someone who's ready to quit what they're trying to pursue because i don't know if you've done it in your life but i've started things and you know how life gets in the way right so i was doing comedy for eight years and i was on a good trajectory but i stopped and then i see all the comedians in toronto you know they're doing their thing now because they were persistent and they kept pushing you know what i mean but i had a young daughter at the time now she's 23 and um, that's why I'm doing this podcast now. And I'm just focusing on this. But do you have any words for anyone who's want to quit what they're doing? You got to be patient, man. Like, and I tell the story to other people, you know, like, it's not the whole, like, I didn't make, I didn't make the basketball team my senior year. Mm -hmm. I'm 35 years old right now. Mm -hmm. I can guarantee nobody on that basketball team is playing basketball right now that I was right. with that I was comparing myself to in 2005. Mm -hmm. No one's playing basketball right now. I'm still playing basketball to this day, the guy who didn't make that team. Yeah. So it's about being patient and running your court, running your race. You know, it's not about comparing to everybody else. Yeah, I can see other people, but I can get motivated by them and not compare myself to them because I know my time is coming. And that. I heard this from Steve Harvey, but like, you know, the real, the real, the best way to be successful is to do what you like to do and find somebody to pay you for it. <laughs> there, and, and you can find, and 
if you can find that, then it's not work anymore. You're just doing what you like to do. It's, yeah. a, it's a difference with that. And so I, for me, I always try to run my race, stay in my own lane, not worry about the next man. I hope everybody can eat. I know it ain't always, it don't always work that way, but that's what I'm hoping for. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I can't focus on them. I got to focus on what I'm doing in, in, in this circle over here. Yeah. And, you know, and that, and it will pay off. Like, honestly, like I keep my head down. I stay focused. I stay locked in with everything. And at the end of the year, or sometimes you just sit back and be like, okay, I've accomplished some things. You reflect on what you did. But let's keep yeah. going. But let's keep going. What have you done? What What's the difference between what I was doing now and what I was doing 10 years ago? Yeah. And so, the, you know, I quit my job in 2000, 2013. Mm-hmm. And that was back in Michigan. And I haven't worked a nine to five since. Wow. Like to hear it. Thanks for sharing that, man. No uh with season two there's two more things i have to do so my daughter was my first interview right so there's two questions you're either gonna answer this one or that one so you just tell me which hand you want me to uh read out to you right so there's two questions here let's let's go with the left what is one of the most memorable moments of your life One of the most, oh, wow. All right, I'll, I'll say one of the most memorable moments in my life was the Slamma Jamma premiere. So for fans that don't know, I, I did a movie called Slamma Jamma in 2000, yes. 2017. And when it aired in theaters and you had the signs of, you know, the billboards and my mom and brother and sister are there and it's a movie. We're in a movie theater and I'm right. being played on the screen and the premiere just seeing my, my old acting teacher and my best friend comes out and they're all supporting that. That's something like, you know, money can't buy. And it was like, this is, it's amazing. You know, like I came out here to California. Uh, I just want to be in, I had a friend out here who was doing like Nike commercials and Taco Bell commercials. Because yeah. he was Slam Duncan. So I wanted to jump into that field okay. when I was like, playing with the Globetrotters. Like, hey, you know, like, can I want, I could dunk too. Like, maybe I can sign with an agent. That was yeah. my goal, to be in basketball commercials and do the Globetrotters at the same time. Okay. I took that to the next level and said, not just commercials, I'm doing movies. I did a movie and uh, never had a, never had a, like, a, a acting class out in California. Mm-hmm. So, to get to that level and to be on a stage like that, it was, that's the most memorable moment I will, I will go with. Sweet. Um, I had that to ask you too, but we didn't go down that path, but yeah, Slamma Jamma, respect to that. Um, and that's a different work ethic too, right? The whole getting up, going to the set, things like that. 12 hours a day for <laughs> nine weeks. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> had like, yeah, five days a week nine weeks, 12 hours a day. And since I was the main character, I, I didn't have, I had one day off. Cool. Um, but every day from seven to seven. Mm-hmm. And when I got back home, I was exhausted. But when I got back home, I was like, I still stay in shape because I was doing like a lot of lines. And so I wasn't like actually working out. So I I would come home and I would do push-ups and things like that and sit-ups and just make sure I look good. I'm like, well, we're on set. Yeah. So I'm looking <laughs> strong you know yeah. But, uh, yeah yo so it's the end of the interview but i did want to mention that though because you're motivating me now you're you're consistently posting now so yeah. i'm watching what motivated you to do the push-up do you do 50 push-ups three times a day or do you add on yeah, what do you, so how try, do you do i try it? to post it like i try to post it once a day because you guys get too, that's just too much just to keep posting but yeah, yeah I, I mean in the house i, get, I wake up i do push-ups first yeah. thing i do i get up I do push-ups and then I go to the bathroom. Yeah. And then we'll go from there. Um, and then my second set is usually the one I post. And then, okay. I do, then before I go to bed, I, I do 50 push-ups. So those are the 150 a day. Um, and then, but yeah, I, I, I did, I started during the pandemic when the pandemic happened, we were stuck in the house. I was like, yeah. it's like prison. Yeah. 
Where is it? Because I could go anywhere. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do some push-ups. I said, during this pandemic, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back. This is how I thought about it. I was like, it's going to be a pandemic. I don't know how long I'm going to be locked away in the house. But when this pandemic is over, I want to be bigger, faster, and stronger. Yeah. And more disciplined. And yeah. push-ups teach me it's a, it's a lesson every single day. Mm-hmm. With push-ups. It's, my, it's like my therapy. It teaches me to lift myself up in the morning. Your, your own body weight. It's just you. Yeah, it's just you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Push that, push that weight, your weight, the weight of yourself. Um, put your own weight in your back. And, you know, it started off as like 25 and 25 got easy. And then it got to 50 and then 50 yeah. got a little easy. So I started doing, I started breaking them up. Like I don't do 50 and then I would do another 50 a little bit later. Yeah. Um, and just seeing that growth, that's just a small growth. But like, you know, I tell people like, you know, go, go do five pushups, do five pushups every day this week. Yeah. After this week, those five push-ups are gonna be easy. Trust me. Well, you're gonna you're gonna be able to hit seven push-ups now. Yeah. Seven, do that same thing. And now by the end of the year, you're gonna be like, man, I can knock out 50 straight. I can knock out, you know. Yeah. Consistency yeah. is key. Yep. Consistency. Yo, but see, now you keep on touching on something. Now I want to ask you, when did you start shooting um footage for you know the basketball footage, dunking over Mama Do? um doing the shots i seen some recent posts where you're with two of your friends and i think you were mentioning the girl right yeah when you were doing the the back-to-back shots and in the slow motion but yeah. um where do you get the ideas from the clip because i gotta tell you <laughs> you had a dunk off with baba duke and um he was yeah. just staying on the ground yeah, and just cheater, turned around. yeah cheater <laughs> Yeah, cheater, bro. I kept talking like, bro, you gotta jump. He's like, I don't have to do anything. I'm sorry, you gotta jump, yeah. but I don't have to jump. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I mean, he's seven five. What you gonna seven do? five? Yeah, what are you gonna do? Like, and so he's like, yeah, I have a dunk off with you. I remember I was like, let's go do a dunk contest, which I think that'd be dope. He's like, all right, cool. I get there, and Mama do like literally like, I'm not gonna jump. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna jump in the air. I can't do all this stuff. I'm gonna do mama do way and i was like that's dope and i was like this might go viral because no one's ever going to see this again <laughs> that's why i'll do work with mama do and mm-hmm. we ended up having like a video we had a king of the court and it was dunks only yeah you're never going to see that ever because yeah. that's that's different you know and that's why i found the the uniqueness i had to find my own lane in the youtube realm of mm-hmm. a dunker like yeah you can have dunk sessions you can have guys that come up with different types of dunks but how can i mix the like the youtube content creator yeah. as a dunker and apply it to the professional dunker mm-hmm. so now i start coming up with games and things like that and just to make dunking fun you know yeah. we can watch dunk sessions and i love them but mm-hmm. they, they can get repetitive a little bit yeah and so i'm like how can i change that up and i don't want to fall into that category of giving you repetitive content i want to give you you know something you probably haven't seen before yeah, and and just on a side, I, I enjoy the content. Sometimes you dress up as old men and challenge people on the court. You do a bunch of things. You know what I mean? Right. Um, so I really enjoy that content, man. I appreciate that. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh, let me ask about Mamadou. So you dunked over Mamadou in the gym. So really. I. Oh, I fell. You fell? Oh yeah, my first time I ever tried jump over Mamadou we were at LA Fitness. Yeah. And I fell right on my head. What? <laughs> yeah, the first time I did that, we were like laughing, but I was like, I was so in so much pain the next day. I laughed it off, but I was like, oh man, I'm gonna feel this tomorrow. Yeah. But then I jumped over him six months later in China. Okay. With everybody. I never tried it again. I said, I'm gonna try this again. I said, I'm gonna try it again. We're gonna mm-hmm. get to China. We had a t- we had a tournament there. Yeah, and uh, everyone's there, and I got like a lot of fans in China, and it was packed out. And I'm like, I called him up. He's like, "You ready?" I said, "I'm ready." <laughs> Wait, is that the one, the clip that I seen? Yeah, the, the one, one. I, the one I actually jumped over and made it. Yeah, we were, um, yeah. we were in China. So, w- what is more like? Fearsome to you, jumping over Mamadou, or I see you jumping Mama over. <laughs> I don't even that? know what your next statement is. Jumping over Mamadou is the scariest thing ever. Yo, but no, but you jumped over like four or five people. Like, 
What about that? Jumping over Mamadou is, is the scariest thing ever. Because first off, I've never been that high in the air before. So yeah, I'm yeah. like, hey, landing's going to be different. Yeah. And he's like, literally, like, you don't compare Mamadou to, like, people. You're like, you compare him to, like, yeah, he's, like, just as tall as that stop sign right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, the same height as that semi-truck. <laughs> That's how I look at Mamadou. And I'm like, yeah, so... When I'm like running, I'm like, this is different than jumping over multiple people because yeah. I have to be super high. And then yeah. when you get there, you're like, now I'm looking in the room, like, okay, this is Ooh. this is different, you know? Because mm-hmm. he's, you know, what I'm saying when he put the ball up, and his hands are like this, we're talking, we're talking eight feet. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but respect to that. That's good that you have that footage, that memory too, man. Yeah. So yeah. Sure. So Chris um before i um get the balloons tell the people where they can find you man find me on instagram everybody underscore hey chris tiktok everybody hates chris facebook which i don't use much it's chris staples um but those are our main the main ones you know and if you guys ever want to like look into global dunk empire which is the company i, I own um it's global dunk empire gmail.com you can email me there or global dunk empire.com and you can go check out our website Sweet. Um, before I get the balloons, is it safe to say you got the name Everybody Hates Chris from Chris Rock's TV series? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And so I, I love that show. And I, uh, I remember like when I was like coming up with a name for Instagram, I'm like, Chris Staples, I like my name, but it's it's got to be something catchy. It's yeah. a lot of Chris's out here. So if I put Everybody Hates Chris, Mm-hmm. that's going to probably be a little catchy and still people, you know, and it's easy to remember too. Like so everybody hates Chris. And now yeah. if, you type, if you type in everybody hates, it, it pops up. It pops up. Yeah. Respect, man. I like that name. Appreciate okay. it. <laughs> All right, Chris. So, you know, I'm doing this for charity um, and causes. So the three charity slash causes that I'm donating to this season, season two of Real Talk with Star Scorpio is Up With Women, the Mississauga Humane Society, and the Fundraiser Warriors. Now, by the balloon that you choose, I'll know who I'm donating to today. I'm going to go with the far left. Season two, the second charity Star Scorpio is donating to is... The fundraiser warriors this is amazing and it's fitting because i just spoke to the mother of two of the kids today and they raise money for charities and they're going to come on my podcast uh, to give them some exposure so the chair the donation goes to them so sweet thank you chris no problem man season two episode two of real talk with star scorpio and we out we out